Hello everyone, I'm Mike and welcome to Spy Drill. Hello everyone, I'm Mike and welcome, I'm Mike and welcome to Spy Drill. Spydro is simply an inline sport fishing camera where the main line from your rod attaches here and on the business end you have your leader with your choice of a lure. So essentially the camera is in line between the rod and the bait focusing on all the action that surrounds the lure. Oh boy, well I guess I got my first camera basically because I thought it would be cool to see the fish actually strike the lure or to see the hookups. Um, but little did I know or did I realize playing back the videos how much of an educational tool or say an asset this thing has become to me. So if you already own a camera, congratulations and welcome to the Spydro family. If you're here just looking for some answers, then you have come to the right place. If by chance I'm unable to answer all the questions that you have in this new video series, no worries. Just contact us through the website page at GetSpydro.com. There are many things that make Spydro special, and when you first look at it, you will notice there are absolutely no buttons, no switches, and no removable caps. This unit is completely sealed. To turn the camera on, all one needs is water. Can you believe that? Just water. And based on your desired settings, the camera will even turn itself off when it's out of the water. What's truly unique is the shape and the buoyancy of the camera. This thing is perfectly balanced with a little weight forward like this. It weighs in at 3.17 ounces, which equates to 90 grams. In the water, this thing is barely there. It is so buoyant, it is decimal 1.4 ounces in weight. At the end of the day, there's a pretty exciting element to owning a Spydro camera. And I mean, like you're out fishing all day, uh, catching fish with your buddies or your wife, you're high-fiving, fist bumping, getting your picture taken, you release the fish, and then you get to go home and relive it and view it at a totally different perspective beneath the surface of the water. And I mean, yeah, that's, it's wild. It's, it's pretty darn wild. This shape is one of a kind. It is small in diameter, and with the uniqueness of this design, it offers perfect hydrodynamic behavior. With the steel attachment bar on the bottom, acts as a keel and always puts the camera in an upright position. The camera is also equipped with 180 degree lights, as you probably noticed them flashing when I first turned the camera on. These are your sensors, which do a variety of things, and we'll get to those as we progress throughout the video. Charging, however, how about that? Does it get any easier than that? Take the USB in, give it a power source, and wait for that light to turn green. So as you can see, I have my cell phone set up, and that is basically because I actually want to show you the app and walk you through some of the settings for the camera through the app. But I highly recommend when you first get your camera, you locate the magnetic USB cord and put your camera on charge. You should have a red light. When that light turns green, that'll indicate you have fully charged your camera. This USB cord also has another important function and you're gonna need it to connect to your PC in order to download the videos from the camera. When you see the light switches to green, that indicates that you have connectivity with your personal computer. So while your camera's charging, you should take the time to download and install the Spydro app into your phone. If it's your first time, you will have to create an account. So take the time, go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go and fight this fish. Next, you're gonna to wanna to connect your camera to your phone. The camera creates a hotspot, and of course the Wi-Fi is called Spydro. There we go. The first time you log in, it's gonna ask for a password, and that password is Spydro, one, two, three, four, with a capital S. 
So before I hit the water, I like to save time and have all my camera settings done beforehand and to ensure I have a fully charged camera. First, before you connect to the app, you have to turn the camera on. And do you guys remember how to do that? Just a little drop of water on the sensors. The flashing blue light indicates the camera is on, but not in any recording mode. With the camera on, you can open up the application on the phone and you can verify the connectivity between the two by the blue bar across the top of this map. That blue bar is actually the readings on the sensors on the outside of the camera. On the far right, we have the battery status, we have the memory, the temperature, the salinity, and a drop down menu of the recording modes. First we have continuous, then we have bite detection where the camera actually turns on when a fish strikes the lure. We have a combination of the two and we have an off button. Now in this menu here, you have more options such as resolution where you can record in 1080p, 720 and even 640. I prefer a high resolution, but you may want a low one because it helps save battery and memory card space. And here you have your clip length and you have some multiple choices here, ranging from 30 seconds all the way to 10 minutes. I like to keep mine around 30 seconds, no more than a minute. And let's just say you're out on a boat and for whatever reason you need to view your footage, it's going to take you 30 seconds or one minute, depending on your choice, to actually load the clip from the device to your gallery before you can view it. That's reasonable. Now, if you chose 10 minutes, it's going to take you 10 minutes to load from the device to the gallery before you can view it. That's not as practical in the field. So give consideration to the length of your clip when you're fishing. And here we have the buttons for the lights. Remember I told you we had 180 degree lights on the front. Also, this button here is called the squid light. This has a fish attracting sequence to it. These pretty much make up your functional settings. And once you've set your desired settings and you power down, you will not have to set them again unless you want to make some changes. This will save you a lot of tinkering time in the field playing with the camera. Instead, you just rig your rod and start fishing. Because remember, when Spydro comes in contact with water, it'll turn itself on. This auto power off button will save you some battery time when it's turned on. When the camera comes out of the water and a duration of three minutes has elapsed, the camera will power down. When the camera returns back to the water, it will power back up. This Wi-Fi off button turns off the Wi-Fi when the camera hits the water, saving you more battery life. And when the camera comes out of the water, it automatically starts the Wi-Fi once again. Another unique feature that Spydro has is the ability to view video recording footage in the field. Your recordings get saved to the device folder and you get to choose which ones you want to save locally and view in your gallery. I know that's a lot of information to absorb, but like anything in life, the more you play with it, the more efficient you're going to become and you're going to want it to become secondhand nature, especially when you're out on the water. Also, when you get your camera, you're going to receive a written manual. This is a great reference guide. Save it, put it in your glove box. Honestly now, how many times have you forgot your phone at home? Me, on many occasions. So, you get out on the water, you got no phone, and you're looking at your camera going, hmm, how am I going to turn this on with no switches? Well, I'm going to show you how. You guys remember the sensors on top? All you need to do is make contact with the first two. Contact with the first two should power up your camera. Most of us have some sort of pliers, uh, forceps, maybe even some scissors to cut the braid. You can even use a fishing hook. Bend the fishing hook to make the contact points. So whatever you got, touch the first two sensors and the camera should power up. Now we're just waiting for a blue light to confirm that we have power, but we're not recording yet. We're good. Touch it one more time and it should be red, which means that we're actually recording now. Yes, we are. So say hello. Touch it twice and it'll power down. I knew I should have brought my glasses. Oh boy, you're making me look silly here. Come on. And now we're powered down. I can't stress enough how important it is to go out each time fishing with a clean camera. And what I mean by that is dump your memory. There's a button on the main menu page of the app and it's called empty SD card. Doesn't get any simpler than that. You need to clear the card, but that's only after you've saved everything to your computer or to your phone. And please make sure, don't be like me, 
make sure you charge your camera before you go fishing. With that, I'm going fishing. You guys play with your camera. Don't forget to post and share your footage. And if you've got any questions, reach out to us at GetSpyDro.com. But most importantly, have fun and be safe out there, guys. One more thing, guys. When you open up your app, you're going to see this button, this red. Everybody wants to press the big red button, okay? If you press that, now what that does is it starts a track log, just like a GPS. Is that, actually, that's what it is. So you've got your speed and notch, you've got your time of recording, and your latitude and longitude. So when you have your camera set to bite detection, and it comes out of the water when you land your fish, it's going to make, mark a waypoint on your map. And what that does is it'll create a track, a route, and a log. You will be able to go back. And if you troll, that's a great feature. So another awesome feature by Spydro. So again, be safe, guys. We'll see you later.